Hello guys and welcome to a trader's journey where the story is all about the journey to success and today I have a very special guest with me, someone that I know very closely. It's John from Beginner Trading. Let's say hello. How you doing John? What's up guys? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Uh, slow day in the market but you know aside from that it's a good day. Yeah, it's always a good day at the end of the day when we we're able to do what we love to do and have passion for. At the end of the day, it's a great one. So like everybody, if you guys want to go ahead and hit the like, hit the subscribe down below. If you guys like seeing the journey of success or you want to go ahead and see more of John, it'll be in the description below. So let's go ahead and get started. Get right into the questions today. So the first question I have, you know, of course, like always, how did you start learning trading? Like where did it come from? Um, so, you know, I always kind of watched mostly, you know, the big short came out like six years ago, if I'm being honest. And I, and I started to watch that movie. And I think when you watch that movie, and you under, uh, when you watch that movie and you understand what kind of money is floating around out there, I think it's natural to be curious about that type of stuff. And so I think that is what originally piqued my interest in trading. And then I think, you know, I Google day trading and, you know, Tim Sykes, warrior trading, all that stuff comes up. And I think my curiosity just increased as I started to learn more about it, which I'm, I'm pretty sure that's fairly common as well. It's a pretty uh, common story too. Um, and then once that happened, you know, I had my trials and tribulations as a trader, but I think uh, watching that movie and then uh, Googling, just Googling day trading uh, is, a, is what originally got me started. Yeah, John, I could definitely say, you know, a little... Yeah, uh, right. Yeah, get the Matthew McConaughey going on, you know. Oh, yes, you sir. know it. You know it. All right, all right, right? Uh, I yes, know sir. I owe him a couple bucks for that saying, but... Uh... Oh, yeah. He copyrighted that, you know. That's trademark. You can't say it. Oh, that's the man right there. All right, so right. let's go into a second question here. And, you know, a lot of the times, you know, trading has to do with emotions, and how do you get around the emotional ruts, the ups and downs? How do you control those emotions while trading, John? Um, I think you just got to develop a system and a process behind it. I think everybody is a little bit different. Um, certain people are going to handle stress and handle different things better than others, and, and certain people are going to have better uh, qualities about themselves than others. And I think that in order to really handle stress, you got to figure out what helps you the most. I know for me, if it's a stressful day, the best thing for me to do is just walk away because if I, if I keep looking at charts, I'm going to keep trading, you know, get a little revenge trading in there. And so for me, I just got to step away. Um, I actually did, you know, when Mitch used to come on the streams, uh, one thing he always talked about was taking like a five-minute break, like reset. I think this is the perfect way to jump into our next questions. And, you know, there's so many misconceptions with trading and so many things that can kind of affect a trader. Uh what do you think is one misconception that you have learned to not affect you in your trading? Um, so I think just the whole get rich quick, you know, thing in trading. And I think that is one of those things that it just, it, I, I'm not sold on getting rich quick. I would much more prefer to just slow it down, you know, spend a good few, you know, years really building a system and then scale up and take some swings once you're a decent enough trader to. Um, I think, like I said, I think there's a lot of misconceptions specifically about getting rich quick and just kind of, you know, day trading to how to make $500 per day. And, and, you know, I get it, but I think one of the most important things is anything that's worth learning is going to take a long time. And trading is, you know, specifically one of those things, definitely one of those things. And so I think understanding that you might not get rich quick, but that it'll be a skill you'll have and that you'll develop uh, as time goes on that can be very valuable without necessarily needing to get rich quick, you know. Yeah, I know in, in this market environment, you know, you're seeing a lot of traders kind of, you know, riding this bull wave and, you know, maybe they haven't run into some troubles in their trading and they think that the, you know, the market has just kind of been easy. Um, I think those are the traders that are going to kind of run into uh, a wall eventually. And it's kind of something that every trader learns. Um, you know, it's not just get rich quick. Um, if you're going to definitely be a part of this game, you have to figure out how to create some true consistency, some true edge, so that you can find your best probable trades and continue with those. Because like, like you said, you know, it's all about the patience and finding that system that can work. Uh, I thought that was a great comment that you made on the last question. So now let's get sure. into what kind of stocks you're trading now, John. I know that you've gone from, you know, 
just about trading everything. So what's tell us about the story of how like kind of you started trading and what are you trading now and kind of what opportunities is there out there for traders? Yeah, for sure. Um, so when I first got started, uh, I think I was like a lot of people who get started in penny stocks. And, you know, I think penny stocks is the natural kind of evolution to get started in the beginning. It's what most new traders are going to get involved with. Uh, mostly just from the marketing that's out there about day trading. It's just mostly penny stock marketing. Um, and also because it, it's cheaper, so you don't need as much capital to get started with penny stocks. Um, but with all of that said, though, when I first got started trading, I just got my butt kicked. And, you know, I was trading penny stocks, and I just kind of got my butt kicked every day, lost thousands. Uh, and then, you know, it's almost a necessary experience because it does cause you to have risk management after that. Um but once I kind of slowed that down, you know, I, I then started to trade mid and high cap stocks. And that's really, during trading those mid and high cap stocks, uh, I developed a, a scalping sort of system. And that's really the system I'm still using to this day. Um, very short term momentum trading in mid and high caps, you know, looking for big confirmed levels and then waiting for those levels to break. Um, it also has a lot to do with like trend confirmation. So, you know, a lot of the time in mid and high caps and, and futures, uh, you need stocks to maintain specific trends, and that's usually when it's the easiest to profit as opposed to when stocks are really neutral and choppy. Um, so I'm mostly scalping the momentum as long as we have decent uh, you know, trend confirmations. Uh, and with that said, I'm now trading futures because in the futures market, that's basically what you do. Um, it's really similar to trading just like the SPY or TBIX or UBXY, really, really similar. If you can trade momentum in mid and high caps, you could trade futures, specifically the E-mini, um, and there's no PDT rule, good amount of leverage, <clears throat> and no commissions uh, as well on a lot of the different platforms. And so I always, ex I always describe it as kind of heaven for experienced traders, and I think a lot of traders kind of get stuck staying very you know, rigid in what they trade. They don't want to trade too many different assets. They don't want to trade too many different things. A lot of the time, they'll just stick purely to stocks, but I think depending on your current situation, you know, the type of, you know, commodity or asset or, or security that you're trading, you know, that can vary. And a lot of times people are too strict with just trading stocks when the future market might suit them better or the crypto market or options. There's just a lot of different niches in the trading world. And, you know, limiting yourself to just one, although I think it's the right, uh, the right thing to do in the beginning for a new trader, just basically to learn the basics. I think once you're experienced and you have developed profitable systems before, I think expanding into other markets, uh, again, is, an, is like a natural progression. And I think it's what a lot of traders end up doing. And so right now I'm in the futures market trading the same scalping strategies I traded in the mid and high cap market. But I also dabble in penny stocks. Uh, although with very small sizing in penny stocks currently, uh, as I build a new system there as well in the last few months. No, definitely. You know, uh, one thing I've definitely noticed in, in the market is that everyone kind of gets these uh, misconceptions on where to go to get outside of the PDT rule. And really, if, if you think about it, you know, the futures could be an easy avenue for that. Um, you get, you know, that cash product and there's even some people that offer some leveraging. So definitely some opportunities out there. If you guys want to go ahead and check out the futures market, definitely check out John on the beginner trading channel. You know, he's definitely going to be one thing I, I love about John is that the transparency that you'll get from beginner trading and, and that's why I used to be a part of it is the transparency and if you want some transparency definitely go ahead and check them out guys yeah come watch guys we, we trade live every day mm -hmm. all, all right, right guys let's go ahead and let's get into another question here I have a really great question I ask this one to almost every single guest that comes on uh, if you could go back to day one of your trading what would you focus your energy on I think I would mostly be risk management, and I think that's the best way to really, you know, fix your trading in the beginning. Because uh, again, a lot of traders get involved, and I know me specifically. I was way over leveraged in the beginning. I was trading way too big, uh, unnecessarily so. And and I think that if I could go back to day one, I would just kind of tell myself to scale down huge, like scale down way smaller than I was trading at the beginning, because I would have saved a lot more money, and you know, overall. I would have been less discouraged as a new trader. Um, and so I think just going back, teaching myself to calculate risk reward, you know, give yourself a specific risk level and a specific reward level, and then try to have favorable odds, uh, you know, with 
your reward relative to your risk. And I think that is one of the most important things new traders can really learn is just to calculate risk reward on every single trade you get into, know where you're going to enter and know where you're going to get out. Yeah, John, dropping in some of the gold like usual. <laughs> All right, guys, let's go ahead and let's get into our last question of the night here. Uh, this is one that is going to be kind of funny because I think John can tell you about it right over his shoulder here. So in the finance <laughs> industry, one thing I notice, and you, you see this with even like the, the big institutionals, they come out with indicators like every week. And, and and they all seem to have some co like some complication or some big old complicated thing. But what have you found that has worked for you, and what is that, and how do you use it? Um. So you know, Mitch and I are very similar in this way. At least you know from what I know is that the VWAP is I'm 100% my favorite indicator, and I think the reason it's my favorite is because. It's so good at identifying short-term trends, you know, and to go back to what I said earlier, the most profitable market is a market that's maintaining a specific trend. And so when you can easily or more easily identify that trend, uh, that trend with the VWAP, it just makes it a very profitable indicator. Um, I do use moving averages as well, but, you know, the VWAP is an indicator I'll have on every single chart I'll have up. You know, on some charts I'll have moving averages up as well alongside the VWAP. But the VWAP is kind of my go-to. It's the, it's the most important one um, just because it's so good at identifying short-term trends. So you know, and if you can identify it, oh, go ahead. What is the VWAP? Uh, so it's the volume weighted average price. It's, it's similar to a moving average, but it takes into consideration volume. And so what it really is is a short-term trend indicator. Um, if you go to Thinkorswim or anywhere and you look for where the VWAP is going to be, it's going to be under trend studies uh, because it's telling you, you know, the intraday trend, basically. Would would that be the the purple line I see over your over your yes. corner? To weatherman it real quick. Oh, you know, there you here. go. Look at that. Here the, the purple line is the VWAP. You know, if a stock mm -hmm. is maintaining above the VWAP, it's in an upward intraday trend or it's maintaining an upward intraday trend. And if it breaks below the VWAP, it's in a short term uh, intraday trend. And and basically unless you're trading reversals, if the stock's below the VWAP, that's going to be your shorting area. And if it's above the VWAP, that's going to be your long area because that's the specific trend you're trying to follow. Hey, well, you definitely uh, pulled off the weatherman <laughs> look there. I appreciate you bringing that up. It is great that that, that was your background. It just goes to show you how much, you know, there's so many indicators, but there is a couple out there that you can find some edge. You know, one thing that I noticed with the VWAP is I just looked at the pattern. I just looked at charts and continuously looked at them. And you could see it for yourself. You know, it, it's, it's a simple, I, I caught like, you know, a night and day. Um, and if there is some kind of edge there, then you just have to find what are the variables that you want to kind of go after to kind of use that indicator to then find a process. Like John talked about it at the end of the day, it's not just about, you know, finding maybe a, a strategy. You have to find the whole process and how you're going to risk management and, and use all the tools that you can to control yourself as, a, as an everyday trader. So, John, last question I have for you, and I, I know I want to add one more here. Uh, you know, I, I, I love I love Jack Jack. You know, I, I miss him. Uh, I, I definitely miss trading with them, and uh, just wanted to kind of mention them out here. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, Jack's getting big, dude. He is a he is a pain in my butt, but I love him. You know, regardless. But he's getting huge. Uh, they're actually home from school during these lockdowns, so I'm seeing him every day. Uh, he's come on stream a few times, sticking his head in there, so I'm sure he'll, he'll be on there again. Uh, my daughter Maddie's getting big too, so yeah, man, they're doing good, man. Appreciate, uh, appreciate it. Hope you're, uh, hope you're doing well, as man. Uh, hope you're doing good as well, brother. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. All right, guys, that's gonna probably do it for us today on a trading journey. Like always, guys, definitely hit the like below if you got some value out of this video, and if you want to go ahead, definitely subscribe check out beginner trading in the description there'll be definitely a link so where you guys can see him trade he trades every single day live so definitely if you want to check it out i would say check it out we're going to always continue these journeys continue bringing traders on that can explain you how you can get to success and that's what it's truly all about that's going to do it for us today like always guys hit the like hit the subscribe we'll see you next time have a great one Later, guys.